when will Biden take ownership? He'll often comment about the terrible things happening in this country, like he's a impartial observer, just tweeting like, who the hell is in charge of this place? It's terrible. We have rampant gun violence. We have restrictions on reproductive rights. When will he say, here's things we could do right away. We need action now. Here's what I'm gonna do by federal mandate. Let the courts overturn it down the road if they're gonna overturn it. Because if you don't say anything, if Biden's completely silent, ordinary Americans' concerns when they're figuring out how to pay for their groceries or rent, then they're just gonna blame him for it. But if he's in the media, on TV, talking about the roadblocks to him making things better, then at least it would feel like he's in control and someone's steering the ship. Let's have a rally. The president isn't capable of rallying a couple thousand people in Washington, D.C. to do something. In American politics, it just feels like every single politician wants to do politics without doing politics. Now Trump, I think it's very possible that Trump could win in 2024. He was doing mostly bad things, but he always made it seem like he was in control of whatever was happening. I'm very highly educated. I know words, I have the best words. Even the coronavirus, he would say ridiculous things about how it was gonna be over in a couple weeks and it'd be nothing and it'd be just like the flu and we, we have it handled. Actually, that's a, probably a better approach than just sitting back and just not saying a word and just letting everything, it seems like, fall apart. The Democrats did have an opportunity in the early Biden administration to make progress and to show that they were a party of getting things done and also getting us past Donald Trump. And early on, Biden showed a willingness to work with progressives. He had Bernie next to him when he was pushing Bill back better. He was able to push a pretty large stimulus bill early on. He had ideas about kind of a broad infrastructure bill, but ultimately they were stymied. Two centrist Democrats are blocking the entire Democratic agenda without saying what they actually want. West Virginia's Joe Manchin and Arizona's Kirsten Sinema. It is wrong for one or two people think to think that they can dictate the outcome of this process. In Congress, you need not only 50% of the House of Representatives, which is our more kind of Democratic lower house, but you need around 60% of the upper house to get anything significant done. And this upper house is extremely undemocratic. There's two senators from every state, so rural, more conservative states are overrepresented. Certain population centers like Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico are not represented at all, so it skews right word, and you need 60% of it to get anything done. There's a reason why when the United States invades and occupies a country, or in the case of Germany, you know, liberates one, they never institute the American presidential system. There's no American who's ever like, this is the great model we should export to the rest of the world, though no, they institute a parliamentary system of some type is more rational. So this is a very long-winded way of saying the Democrats got in power and they didn't do much, in part because of the structures of U.S. governance itself, but in part because of a few obstructionist Democrats. Now, what Biden could have done, I think, is gone out there, given speeches, said to the American people, I'm trying to help you, but Congress is getting in my way. The Americans actually like Joe Biden. I wish you liked better, these or these? Joe, they're the same. I hate most of what he stands for, but I kind of like Joe Biden too, because he's kind of like your drunk, crazy uncle who just says ridiculous and stupid things from time to time. We have fewer democracies in the world today than we did 15 years ago. Fewer, not more, fewer. I think his advisors, who are much more conventional Democrats, have basically locked him up to try to keep him away from going out in public and appearing either old or senile or just saying inappropriate things. You ever been to a caucus? No, you haven't. You're a lying dog-faced pony soldier. You, you can't govern unless you're out there using the bully pulpit, using executive orders to do things, but there's no mass politics in this country. It's all hollowed out. Bernie Sanders was attempting to do a little bit of mass politics, and Donald Trump was actually doing mass politics on the right, but that's not the norm in the US. People just wanted to make backroom deals and complain, and it's no, no surprise that Americans are very cynical about things. I think if you want to think about an era when Democrats were far stronger, Think about the 1930s, during the devastation of the Great Depression. FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, decided that he was going to pursue a new political course. And he did this, it was a twofold 
thing. First of all, there was economic measures that were undertaken by the government. Instead of just waiting for the free market to do its thing, get us out of depression, FDR began a massive public works program. He helped push through legislation that allowed people to join unions and collectively bargain legally. They created social security and the very bedrock of the American welfare state. These pieces of legislation were pushed through with the help of a strong militant labor movement and with a working class coalition that include people of all backgrounds. Democrats today don't really promise people a vision of a better tomorrow where there could be more and more social rights, true universal health care, whatever else. So instead what we're left with is just little technocratic tinkering around the margins. Democrats give us identity politics. They tell us you matter and you should be represented. But the most they'll ever give us is micro redistribution around the corner. Where is abortion rights more secure? Where is issues of criminal justice reform most secured? Is it most secure in a coalition of academics and people in the media? Or is it more secure as embedded in a coalition of working class people. So we need to figure out what are the issues that we could rally the most people around. Uh, then we need to create this kind of broad program that really tackles all forms of oppression and exploitation out of it. But I think the squad, these left-wing politicians that got elected in the wake of Bernie Sanders 2016 and later 2020 run, I think have done a lot to put the left on the map in the United States. We haven't had this presence at the national level. So I think they've been really useful for many people who care about Medicare for All, the Green New Deal, all sorts of policies that I think could really help working class people. But I think the real problem is they haven't tapped into the rhetoric of Bernie Sanders as fully as they could. Bernie Sanders was able to reach people in what in the US we call purple and red districts. So parts of the country that are either kind of in between the Democrats or the Republicans or actually lean Republicans, Bernie was able to reach ordinary working class people there. Is raising a starvation minimum wage to $15 an hour, a living wage, a radical idea? No. Is passing a Medicare for all single payer system a radical idea? No. Now, I feel like the squad right now, their rhetoric often drifts into a form of what I would call like ultra liberalism. But I think the same message works for black workers, white workers, Latino workers, Asian workers, people from all across the world basically have the same needs. They want a safe place to live. They want access to good paying jobs. They want access to healthcare and education. They want a better life for themselves and their children than their parents had. There's really a common sense narrative that I think binds us all as human beings. And I think we just need to repeat and reiterate that common sense over and over again to just show the really crazy people, the really fringe people in American political life ought to be the crazy Republicans talking about critical race theory in schools when they could be talking about safe classrooms for students or the Democrats who are making very symbolic stances, taking a knee for Black Lives Matter, but actually won't institute the policies that would actually help ordinary Americans of all races. I have some hope more broadly for progressive change in the United States. I think right beneath the surface of what's at times a quite venial society is real human consideration and kindness. Immediately when there's a disaster, Hurricane Katrina to a terrorist attack like 9-11, people line up for days at blood banks. They wanna give, they wanna find a way to donate to charity. They want to feel like they're a part of making the world a better place. And I think in the long run, we'll find politicized solutions to these political problems. The left has very few institutions still standing from our last wave of struggle, and Double Down News is one of them. So if we wanna keep in the fight, you need to support independent media institutions. And I am a member of the, the Patreon of Double Down News. I hope you become a member too and fight back against billionaire-controlled media.